Presenting our nation's colors is the North Florida Joint Service Color Guard from Jacksonville, Florida. Here to perform the national anthem, please welcome to the United States Air Force Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, Washington, D.C., Tactical Sergeant Nalani Quintello. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the We're so gallantly streaming, and the rockets ring around, the bombs bursting in air, yet through the night that our flag was still God, is that beautiful? That's my president right there. Look at that. What's up, cum stains? Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, is the Grand Marshal of the Great Race, the Daytona 500. Where can a healthier heart lead you? For people with heart failure taking Entresto, it may lead to a world of possibilities. Entresto helps your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. Don't take Entresto with pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with... Why are they talking about pregnant? That bitch is old as fuck. Angioedema with an ACE or R. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood... It's not her kid. That's like her grandkid. Ask your doctor about Entresto. Sports with his brother. Not a credit score, but sometimes your score gets in the way of the things you want to do. Personal consumer loans through net credit help you borrow up to ten thousand dollars, and you can check if you're eligible on netcredit.com without affecting your credit score. All I want to see is President Trump say, "Gentlemen, start your engines," and then get back in that limousine. And do a lap around the track. I'm the Virginia Veterans Care Center. We are a benefit for our veterans, and we're neighbors of the Salem VA Medical Center. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and more importantly, we offer special rates for veterans. Who God bless our home. veterans. Before it is necessary for you to find an alternative home for your loved one, call me today for your guided tour and see what the Virginia Veterans Care Center can do for you. It's boat time at Bojangles. For a limited time, get two country ham biscuits for just $4. Traditionally cured grilled country ham served on made from scratch biscuit. Bojangles buttermilk biscuits are baked every 20 minutes. Bojangles is bullshit. And served up hot and fresh for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Hurry in today for two made from scratch country ham biscuits for just $4. Bojangles, it's boat time. Family owned since 
Look at all these redneck racist commercials. When you trust your truck to Anchor, you're putting it in Biscuits and gravy and truck bed liners. There's no diversity in NASCAR. Trump is racist. Anchor uses this. Stop in to Anchor Truck Accessories. They should show some Native Americans drunk off their ass, sleeping on the fucking streets. Or maybe some lesbians making out. Actually, that wouldn't be half bad. We're getting closer to the start of the Daytona 500. As we walk into that live on Fox, let's head down to the track now and join our JB Little, who's with President Donald Trump. Thank you, Chris. Well, Mr. President, of all the events that you can attend, why did you decide to come here today to the Great American Race? It really is a great American race, and I look at this as almost a patriotism kind of thing. It's incredible. The people are incredible. We love the area. We love the state, and it's a very exciting. You know, I've been here four times before as a civilian, and now I'm uh, in a different capacity. We love NASCAR, and we love the people of NASCAR. And you mentioned you have been here before the last time, though, back in 2001. So what is it about NASCAR that you enjoy personally? I think it's really the bravery of these people. I mean, these are very, you know, they do all the safety things and everything, but it's it takes great courage. It's the speed. It's really the technology. You look at what's happened just over the last 10 years with the cars. I love to see it. I love to watch it. Okay, so inquiring minds want to know, as the president, are you allowed to drive your own car? Well, you know, I'm not, but I think I'm going to, right now, if I can, I'm going to hop into one of these cars, and I'm going to get into this race, if possible. All right, you heard it here first. Yeah, I love the idea. Thank you for being here. Enjoy your time. Great honor. Thank Thank you. you Chris? Thank you very much. First commander-in-chief, first president to give the command for the Daytona 500 as the uh, Grand Marshal with Jamie McMurray as the drivers, and you touched on it a moment ago. This is going to be fucking awesome. Relaxation at this point, uh, getting ready to roll, and we're just minutes away from those drivers. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Warren is in uh, Nevada in a high school gymnasium talking to a bunch of Indians drunk off their asses that want more free shit. Democrats ain't got nothing on this. Well, if you watch the, the clash last Sunday, you know, like, we, we had a lot of wrecks towards the end. Now, the guys, they, they were careful in the duels and made sure that they made it to the end. Uh, but today, look, when it comes down to the end, it's going to be chaotic. And I think Kevin's right. I mean, survival's going to be a big deal. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who's on the pole at age 32, a different team. His entire career, he has been with Roush racing fast and qualifying uh, fast in, in racing. He's got super speedway success. Yeah. How will that play out here? Well, look, what a way to start with his new team. He and Brad and Patty brought over his crew chief from uh, from Roush Fenway Racing. Um, he was really good in the duels. We saw him get hung out a couple times on the bottom, was able to pull back up. Um, I think everyone knows how fast Ricky's car is, and that's a big deal when we come to these kind of tracks. Is there anyone in this race named Dale? What are the odds someone named Dale is going to fly through the air upside down in a Mustang? Hi, Chris, and hello, everybody. What an electric day, and just the atmosphere here in Daytona is always huge. It's the biggest race of the year, and make today even more so. We've been down here for 10 days in Speed Weeks 2020, and Friday they have something on the calendar called TV Exhibition Time. Um, Fox didn't have anything planned. I thought, I'd have the whole track to myself. This could be a lot of fun. What? You were on the track Friday? What? I've been coming to Daytona since 1975, so I asked the boys to get me a Wayback Machine so I could go out on the track. Oh, Jesus, it's AMC Gremlin. Really? I was doing 
1970. That blur was you? I had no idea you were even out there, Mike. Wow, that was you. Chris, we're speechless. <laughs> well, I think there's a reason that you guys are drivers and, and we're, we're announcers, but it was nice to see at least Jeff get challenged for a little bit out there. Yeah, that was very fitting. I can't believe that Mike's out in that car, uh, but, but Jeff clearly in that Camaro was right at home. Now, let's talk about some of the other guys. Denny Hamlin, a chance going for his third. He's won two of the last four. He's in a Toyota. We talked about the numbers. Kyle Busch said, hey, the Fords, we know they can push well with each other. Where will the Toyotas go? The Chevys have the numbers in terms of number of cars in this race. And the elite on help, obviously, in certain times. And Chevy has won the most. Takes all the 500s. Well, we asked Kyle Busch what his plan was, and he wouldn't tell us. We're going to find out here in a little bit. Clearly, they don't have the numbers. Uh, Denny Hamlin's going to the back. Kyle Busch is already in the back. So we're going to Come on, Trump. Kind of what they're plan is. Yeah, those cars going to the back and in a race 500 miles with the kind of movement we have, and you and Jeff Gordon talked about it on the pre-race show just a little bit, you have an opportunity to kind of move your way around. So how aggressive do you want to be even to maybe get that first stage? I know the ultimate goal is be there at the end. Look, we've seen them crash come into the stage finishes, and you don't want to do that. If you're involved in one of those, you swear you'll never do it again when you come back to Daytona. So, look, I, I don't expect these guys to be too crazy at the beginning because the ultimate trophy is at the end, and that's what everybody wants today. Yeah, will it be a, a guy who's won the Daytona 500 before, like a Denny Hamlin or a, a Jimmy Johnson, or will it be a, a champion? I hope Kyle Busch wins because so many people Martin hate him. Or Martin Truex, who been a champ of the sport but have yet to win the Great American Race. You gotta tune in, wait 500 miles to find out. We're glad you're watching Fox NASCAR Live from Daytona International Speedway. NASCAR fans, to welcome back your United States Air Force Thunderbirds and to deliver the most famous words of the Here we go. the Daytona 500. Please welcome this year's Grand Marshal, the 45th President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, accompanied by First Lady of the United States, Melania Trump. Daytona International Speedway, we love our country, and it's truly an honor to be with all of you at the Great American Race. Gentlemen, start your engines. Oh, my God, he said gentlemen. Oh, my God, why didn't he say drivers start your engines? He said gentlemen, start your engines. What a bigot. What if there's a woman out there or a tranny? How disrespectful to not be inclusive of the transgender. Oh, I'm so offended. I just want to see if he's really going to take the limo around the track. Done yet? Uh, okay, sorry, sorry. You sure? Mm -hmm. I guess uh, Darius Darius Rucker, is that his name? The guy from Hootie and the Blowfish? He was performing earlier today. But you know, CNN isn't going to show a black man at the Daytona 500, they're just going to show all the goddamn Confederate flags. Because it's fucking fake news. Official news channel of the fucking socialists. It's a familiar story. Allergies ruining your sleep and next day too. Taking Zizol at night relieves allergies while you sleep. The fuck so is that shit? Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec at nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. I'm 52, but in my mind, I'm still She's 52, five. but still That's sucks cock. To keep me moving the way I was made to. It oh, here I am with my kindergarten class. And I've got a cream pie dripping out of me. Triple strength plus magnesium. I am back. After months away, I return. I am the humble beginning for some, and the triumphant return for others. I am receiving for May, and history is written. No, he's going to drive his Cadillac limousine. It's got a goddamn Corvette engine in it. The 
You didn't know that Darius Rucker is black? I think he's black. What else could he be? Could be Turkish, like Hamburg. There's the limos. Holy shit. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. Obama would never be welcome to do this. Donald Trump is the second sitting president to attend the Daytona 500. George W. was here in 2004. A race won by the man who will wave the green flag for today's race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. But this is truly an historic first. A sitting United States president pacing the field. That's a beast of a car right there. A Cadillac stretch limo with a Corvette engine. Armored glass. Armored plate fucking body panels. That's so badass right there. How many people worldwide are watching this? I'm not sure how this idea came about, but I have an inkling. A phone call was received the other day in Franklin, Tennessee, at the home of our former colleague, Daryl Walter, who retired from broadcasting at the end of the 2019 season, asking him to fly to Palm Beach this morning and join President Trump on Air Force One on the ride up here to Daytona. So I would not be surprised if Daryl had a little hand in what we're about to see. Daryl. He's giving some tips down there about those high banks here in Daytona. Daryl is a distinguished country name. And are the drivers excited about this? Well, not like Dale. Are you still paying the field? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. God. Oh, awesome. You know, Mike, people ask me, do you miss it? You know, are you jealous of this? Look at this fucking there? shit. Today, right now, I am. I would love to be in this Daytona 500 field out there. This man is unstoppable in his re-election. Now, we know that at least 70 miles an hour is required to uh, keep those cars up on the banking. Those presidential limousines, which are built on truck chassis, weigh about 22,000 pounds. Holy fuck. not be doing 70 through the 31-degree banking of turns one and two. But uh, we'll stay down on the eight. So they must be built on a suburban chassis or something like that. What kind of horsepower is underneath the hood of that car? Well, Jeff, our Fox Graphic Department came up with a comparison between the NASCAR Cup cars and what Secret Service calls the Beast, the presidential limousine, uh, built by Cadillac on a truck chassis with Cadillac sheet metal. It's two feet longer than the Cup car. And it's a little heavier at 22,000 pounds. Jesus Christ, 22,000 pounds. Is sufficient. Uh, but unknown, it's been estimated that those side windows are five inches thick of bulletproof glass and that the sheet metal is some eight inches thick as it's fully armored. And, of course, seating capacity seven for the limo and one for our cup cars. The only thing I wish they'd have modified on that limo is put a spoiler on that rear deck lid. Yeah. Just for NASCAR. Well, it does have a couple of antennas for communication, after all. Uh, not sure what those flags on the front fender are going to do for aerodynamics. <laughs> Nor do we care. Jesus Christ, does it feel good to be an American? The United States president to attend a race here. Ronald Reagan gave the command to start from Air Force One and was here when Richard Petty drove to his 200th vic uh, victory over Cale Yard. Look how majestic Empire that is. George H.W. Bush, the summer of 92. And George That's Bush, one of the prettiest things I've ever seen in my life. Daytona 500. Uh, Bill Clinton campaigned at Darlington at a NASCAR race, but the president with the... I'm just in awe of, of President Trump, how Carter, fucking badass he is. Friends in Georgia when he was governor was Alf Knight, the longtime superintendent... Of well, the Nevada Democrats Senate. are out in Nevada pandering to the poor, telling them they're going to give him more free shit by taxing the rest of us that have jobs. Someone on Twitter uh, took a picture of the presidential limousine, and emblazoned the NASCAR style number 45 on the door. But nice. That idea was rejected in favor of the presidential seat. 
But we know we, these race fans, they've been ready all week. They're super excited, waving flags of their favorite driver, but i got to imagine there's a lot of American flags waving out there right now as we get ready to take the green flag in. And if you're a fan of professional cars, limousines, and the like, there is a great exhibit of presidential limousines of the past at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Big Rob Fitness, Dearborn, Michigan. God bless America. Fuck the Democrats. That's a sight for the ages right there. So this is a green flag lap. This lap actually counts. It's very strange. After all, what sporting event would not want to have President I could have sworn they were waving the green flag. That means it was the start of the race. Welcome to Daytona. We're ready. We've been ready for 10 days for the biggest and first race of the 2020 NASCAR Cup season, the 62nd Daytona 500. Rookie or veteran, no matter how long you've been coming to this event, there are butterflies. There have to be. Jeff Gordon has won this thing three times, and I'll bet even you're just a little nervous right now. Well, we've got some rookies in the field today. I'm sure those butterflies are going crazy right now. But even the veterans, I mean, this, there's nothing like the buildup, the amount of hard work that goes in to prepare for the Daytona 500, the biggest race of your career, one of the biggest races in the world. I guarantee you there's a lot of butterflies. But You guys think Dale Chance is watching this, spitting tobacco? All right, we'll take you through it. Three stages of racing in the biggest event of the year. Let's begin. With our starting lineup, Ricky Stenhouse, an aggressive two-time Super Speedway winner, and Alex Bowman, first straight 500, he'll be on the front row. Row two, Joey Logano, who won his dual I'm really kind of confused. They waved the green flag. As well, they earned the second row spots. Then it'll be Eric Almarola, who has two cup wins, and Jimmy Johnson beginning his final full season in NASCAR. Ryan Newman, a former winner of the Daytona 500, and Kyle Larson, who ran out of gas leading in 2017. And in row five, Brad Keselowski, yet to win the Daytona 500 in 10 attempts. And you just heard me say, my pick for the day, Kevin Harvick, 2007 Daytona 500 champion. I'm going with Kyle Busch. Two years ago, and Cole Custer, one of six rookies in the field. Austin Dillon, the 2018 winner, and Eric Jones, who won the Clash. What about Dale? Row 8, starting 15. Mark Church Jr., oh, so close. No one named Dale. Watch for him to be a real threat today. And alongside him, Matt DiBenedetto led the most laps last year in the 500. Now with a, a team, the Wood Brothers, who are the last to have an underdog win this race. Christopher Bell, one of the big three from the Xfinity Series, moving to Cup this year. And 2017 winner, Kurt Busch. Chris Busher returns to Ford and to Roush Racing this season. And Ross Chastain. Danny Hamlin. Won two of the last four or five hundreds. He'll have to go to the rear for inspection issues. And two-time Xfinity champ Tyler Reddick. John Hunter Nemechek. Tyler. Is running this race. He's a rookie. Tyler's He's real close to the name Taylor. Taylor. Three Daytona starts. Chase Elliott, second generation NASCAR's most popular driver. Michael McDowell. Everyone knows who Taylor is, right? Ryan Blaney has gone to a backup car. After the guy who cocked Nate. And the defending series champion Kyle Busch. Clint Boyer, it's his 15th try to win the 500. Will this be the day? And David Reagan, who has a great record on super speedways, coming out of a brief... What about retirement. Dale? In row 16, starting 31st. You want to know who has the best active, uh, average finish of active drivers? Ryan Priest, alongside him, an emotional day, making it into the race on Thursday, racing his way in. Jimmy this is a two-and-a-half-mile track. One here last July, Brennan Poole, a rookie. Quinn Hauf, another rookie. There's the base car. Generation racer, Corey LaJoy. Joey Gase and BJ McLeod in the 19th row. BJ. In the last row, getting in on speed. 44-year-old veteran Brendan Gaughan, who announces he'll retire at the end of this season. And Reed Sorensen, who also timed in the Great American Race. Honorable mention to Dale Chance. The 40-car field. 
is car number 48, the only number that Jimmy Johnson has ever run in his Cup Series campaign. The only owner he's ever driven for is Rick Hendrick in one of Rick Chevrolet's seven championships, tying Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt on the Dale! title list. Not one to show emotion, but Mike, I gotta believe underneath that helmet, Jimmy. They just mentioned Dale. Impacted this final Daytona 500 lead in this field. What a moment! A lap of honor for Jimmy Johnson as he starts his final full season and what may be his final 500. Before we get things started here in Daytona, let's rev up to green. Brought to you by Toyota. Off with an emotional win in the Daytona 500 by Denny Hamlin and the number 11 Camry that carried J.D. Gibbs' name above the door. Just a month after the family and the sport said goodbye. Martin Truex Jr. went on to sweep the Toyota races at Richmond and Sonoma. Coach Gibbs doesn't look like he's aged any since he left the Redskins. Second Cup championship and third for Toyota. Time now to get rubbed up for what 2020 will bring. By the start finish line, yellow flag waving, indicating another couple of pace laps and time to talk. Jesus to Christ. Series champ. Hey Kyle, this is Jeff and Mike up in the booth. Uh, got a copy? Yeah, I got the guy. I got to say, I don't think I've ever felt a Daytona 500 like this to get this green flag. Uh, you've done it all, man. You've won two championships, so many races. You've dominated this sport. I got to ask you, even as a veteran, do you have butterflies right now as we're getting ready to take the green? Uh, not really. Just uh, try to put all that out. Just focus on what's ahead. Focus on the green. Try to make all of them moves that you can. And uh, everybody else. I like M&Ms. Going on with them. So maybe, you know, first little bit, let everybody work their dinners out and everything. And then get down to business. But uh, overall, for me, like you said, I've been here a while. <laughs> when I first started, uh, I remember my first day on the 500. You won that one. So that one was certainly uh, a bit of butterflies. Well, you've never been one to just uh, sit back and kind of let the race come to you. I'm just curious, you know, if the opportunity presents itself here early on, you're, you're starting probably further back than you'd like. Will you take some risk? Will you take some chances if you see something that maybe opens up for you? Oh, uh, my notebook says manage risk. So, uh, you've got to do that all day long and put yourself in the best position you can at the end. you got to be in it to win it. So, uh, you know, there's nothing that pays besides stage points. We'd love to get stage points, but... We're certainly all looking forward to watching you. Good luck. Thanks for talking to us. Got it. Thanks. Risk management for Kyle Busch in the early going here of 200 laps at Daytona. Let's get down to our Fox NASCAR All-Star pit crew, beginning with Vince Welch. But Mike, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was fired from his ride at the end of last season. Today, he finds himself... Who's that blonde bitch? Starting on the pole of the sports... But she knows what to do with a cock. Stenhouse is full of motivation and confidence, and his car has proven it is full of speed. And Stenhouse believes that's a combination capable of carrying him to a Daytona 500 victory today. Matt Yoko. Vince Martin Trix Jr. has written a lot of history over the past decade and a half. A championship cemented his place in the sport forever, but was missing the period a Daytona 500 victory. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. blah. Get this, this shit started. The way Truex firmly believes that. He says that he too has to manage risk. If he's there at the end, he's got a card that will do anything he wants. Once they go to a green flag, I think I'm taking a nap. Are you looking for a driver to cheer? Oh, I would love to hit that. She needs her asshole licked. Look no further than Cliff Boyer. He's never won this race. And today, he has a new crew chief. Johnny Clausmeyer told me it's his job to keep him focused. He thinks they have a good enough car to bring it home to victory lane. Big and Smith. Well, Jamie, Penny Hamlin is already a two-time winner of the Daytona 500, including last year's race, the 2019 champion. But in pre-race tech, his car failed earlier today. That means he will have to go to the back of the pack. The good news is the team said this race car is just as good as last year's. Going to the back of the pack to start the Daytona doesn't really hurt you. Because if there's a wreck, you're going to be right up there up front when they restart. In Daytona for 500 miles, 
200 laps, a race that will be divided into three stages, adding more elements to strategy. So in our Fox Control Center... I wouldn't want to be anywhere near the front of this race for the first fucking 20 laps. Well, Mike, while you and Jeff were joyriding earlier in the week around Daytona International <laughs> Speedway on one of your three off days, I might add, I've been back here crunching numbers for my strategy wearing this calculator out. Now, the strategy is going to be all over the place, but to create that strategy, I had to take a look at the race analysis, so I want to share the race analysis. Jesus look Christ, they are milking the fuck out of this. For 200 laps, 500 miles. The stage is 65, 65, and the run to the checkered flag will be 70. Look at that pit road speed. It's important. 55 miles per hour. And, Mike, this is what's going to be critical for the strategy. Fuel window. 38 to 42 laps, and you look so good in that gremlin. Well, the difference was, I got to take mine home, Larry. Well, Jeff had to return that Camaro to Burt's. I did. That's a rental car. Hard to believe, 750 horsepower that thing. Check the tire cap. <laughs> what? Right, President Trump paced the field, and then he asked for an official's radio to all the drivers and crews. What? Never heard Obama say God bless you, that fucking Muslim motherfucker. What a way to get the 2020 season kicked off. Seven former Daytona 500 winners in the field. Seventeen former 500 winners on site here in Daytona. As the lights are out atop the safety car. Here we go. Next time by. It was very sunny this morning. As folks were lined up to get into the big stadium here. Here's our Fox weather app showing 78 degrees right now. It's going to be cooler as the day goes Damn, that's pretty hot for the middle of February in Daytona. On track with all 40 cars. They've not been on track with these kinds of warm temperatures in a draft. I think that no, it's been chilly all week for practice. I'm going to tell them a lot about the kind of day they're going to have, the kind of race car they're going to have. Ricky Stenhouse has chosen the outside of row one. And here's a look at our Fox on The track should have plenty of grip, being nice and warm from the sunshine. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Ross Chastain, Christopher Bell, and Kyle Larson. And Jimmy Johnson is carrying our Fox Pfizer cam today. Here's a look lower right at what it's like going around Daytona International Speedway from the driver's seat. Just no better perspective. I mean, if you want to know what it's like driving in the draft at 200 miles per hour, that is the angle. Drivers weaving back and forth, trying to clean any old loose sand or grit off their tires, maybe get a little heat in them. Yeah, it really doesn't do shit. Actually, you hear little, little fuel savings there, Mike. I mean, even though they haven't taken the green flag, the more they can save, the better they, they'll be when that first pit stop comes. As we get ready to race in Daytona, the 2020... Yeah, they burned off a shitload of fuel doing all these goddamn warm-up laps. WWE superstar Sheamus, the pace car driver today. He was fun in our free race. Good time to him and Michael. Seamus is like the Irish version of Brad. Turn four, back 31 degrees on the east side. The ocean side. Cookie cutter high. beard. They'll come down onto the flat, 1,200 foot short shoot, and address themselves to Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the green flag. So, folks, for the 20th season of Fox NASCAR coverage, if you've got a favorite saying, keep that in mind. <laughs> Yellow. Please hold. Please hold. Uh, a couple of sprinkles on the windshields, we're told. Oh, fuck. So we're going to try this one lap from now. As if the anticipation, the anxiety. That what the fuck? The green flag. And all these drivers care about right now is getting that green flag. Because once the green flag plays, and now you're in the race mode. But right now, even at, you know, this pace lap, you're still thinking. Overthinking. What if you got a poop? I know they piss their pants. I wonder if anybody shits their pants. We have a couple of drivers racing in their final 500, including seven-time 
champion, Jimmy Johnson. I, I flash back to watching this race with my grandfather and my dad sitting on the couch in uh, San Diego. Um, I recall coming through the tunnel my first time. So excited to come. Brad to must die his beard. He's older than Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's showing a little gray in his beard. Experience it was like, I'm here. Thoughts of a champion. Seven time. Yeah, and here's something else that we're going to be bringing you today for the very first time the Daytona 500. Jimmy Johnson, we talk about his fitness level. We're going to be carrying a heart rate monitor in his race car and following along right now. I mean, this guy's he's unbelievable resting heart rate like 40 beats per minute right now getting ready to take the green flag at 75 beats per minute well he's just sitting there a few drops of water on the windshield as two-time daytona 500 winner dale earnhardt jr has the green flag in hand god if that don't make you feel old dale jr wears glasses now this is the narrow portion of the Florida Peninsula. It does not have any mountains or big land masses to break up showers, so we get these little pesky pop-up showers, and we've been plagued with them now three times throughout this speed week. Oh, God. But you said pop-up, Mike, I mean, that came out of nowhere. You look at this radar, nothing on it you know, uh, until you go further back, but just that tiny little pop-up just happened to land right over the top of the Daytona International Speedway. There's the problem, Jeff. That's the narrowest part of Florida right there, and there's no big cities to break these things up once they, once they start to build. Fortunately, it is clear behind this, so we are hopeful of getting this Fortunately. underway shortly. All right, guys, girls. It's not Cookie cutters, dirt cutters. It's Daytona 500 day. Thank you for joining me in that historic moment with President Trump and the First Lady. Remember to keep your powder dry and your cock hard. <laughs>